Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us as we continue our new series called Dangerous Prayers. Pastor Daniel began this last week. It's my joy to continue it this week and I'm so glad you're joining us on this journey. We've called it Dangerous Prayers because these are the kind of prayers that when we pray them, there is more than an element of ooh as a possible reaction. Because we all love the fact, don't we, that God is a God who answers prayer. Many of you are going to have examples in your life where you've said, I prayed for and God answered. Maybe it was a new job. Maybe it was healing. Maybe it was a new apartment. It was something you needed or another very practical situation. And you're very, very thankful that God answers prayers. But there are some prayers that when we pray them, and God, being the God he is, answers them, is going to mean a moment of what's about to happen now then, God. God, I'm giving you permission in a pretty courageous way to do something in my life. And so these are big prayers. These are prayers that when God steps in and answers, there's going to be something happening in us. There's going to be happening something on the inside of us. And we are opening ourselves up for God Almighty himself to do amazing things in us and through us. But it might be a little bit like, you know, the toothpaste tube. You know, when it gets right down the bottom and there's just that little bit left inside, you need to squeeze that tube. You need to give it a good twist to get out what's in. And there are some prayers a bit like that. that we're saying, God, I'm inviting you to get out what's in. And maybe there's going to be a bit of squeezing. Maybe there's going to be a bit of, certainly a bit of changing going on. And so I'm inviting you to open up your life. We're inviting us all to pray these big prayers that are courageous, that are dangerous prayers. So last week, as Pastor Daniel kicked off for us, we spoke about God search me and test me and see if there's any way in me that's not pleasing to you, that's not right in your eyes, where I need to change. And we were saying, God, you know everything already about me. But I am inviting you to tell me what you see. I'm inviting you to give me the report card here. I'm inviting you to open up everything you know about me and point out where I need to change. And I am praying it because I am desiring to change, to walk in your way where I'm currently not. And so let's pray those prayers. God, search me, test me, prove me here and take me on the right way. And then the second prayer from last week was, God, break me. Break my heart for what breaks yours. I don't want to stand before you with a hard heart that's, you know, arrogant and hard and proud. I want to come to you broken and say, God, I, I, just, I just desire to live broken in your presence with a soft and brittle heart that has your heart in here. We're going to go on this week and we're going to look at three other prayers. Three other dangerous prayers. Three other prayers that when we pray them and God answers, our life is going to change. First prayer for today is this. God, stretch me. God, stretch me. In Exodus chapter 14, 15 to 16, we read this. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Moses is leading the Israelites and he turns around as we read here and he's crying out to God. God, do something. God, change the situation. And actually God speaks back to him and says, why are you crying out to me? Why? You don't want me to do something. I want you to do something. And the thing he tells him to do is raise your staff and stretch out your hand. See, God wanted to do something amazing through Moses. But he needed him to be willing to get out of 
what he'd known to that point and to engage in new ways and new things. Raise your staff and stretch out, Moses. When we pray this prayer, God, stretch me, we are saying, God, get me out of my comfort zone. We're praying this, God, I don't want to go through my life with the big question mark, how would it have been if I had? God, I don't want to go through my life never really knowing what my full potential in you was. I don't want to go through my life always having stayed in the comfort safe zone of everything I've ever known up until this point. I don't want to stay in the safe zone of normality. I don't want to stay in the safe zone where I've never been stretched to really see what you really might and could have done through me if I had only been willing to get out of where I always default to by playing it and keeping it safe and easy. I want to discover the fullness of the purpose of God as to why I was placed on this earth in the first place. I want to test to the limit. With God, all things are possible. I want to fully test to the limit. God, you have plans to prosper me, to give me a future and a hope. No eye has seen, no ear has heard the plans that God has for those who love him. God, I, 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 I'm daring to invite you to, to take me there. See, all of us love the easy life. As human beings, we love our comforts, don't we? I mean, when was the last time you went to the furniture store and said, I'm looking for the most uncomfortable bed? You know, that's the one I want. Or the, give me that sofa that I just can't, you know, I just can't sit on properly. Or you didn't buy a new car and thought, these seats are really going to be hard to sit in for a long journey. So yeah, this is the car for me. No, we're saying this is, hey, these seats, this is comfortable. I can, I can sit in this. I can watch a movie on this sofa. I mean, I can lie in this bed long on a Saturday morning. Maybe some of you are still in your bed, your nice big comfortable beds, watching this church online. You see, all of us, at the end of the day, really love normality and comfort and when things are easy. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with a comfortable bed and there's nothing wrong with a comfortable sofa. We all want those things. But let's not live life on default mode of just like everybody else, how it's always been mode. In my pocket, I have an elastic band. And this elastic band, like all elastic bands, is pretty useless in how it currently is just kind of dangling here from my hand. It only becomes into its own when I stretch that band. It starts to become useful. It starts to fulfill its purpose when it gets stretched because that's when it's going to bind things together. And the life God wants us to live is only really fulfilled when we are stretched. You see, all of us will be familiar with many Bible stories of Bible heroes. But we remember these stories and we admire them and we'll say, oh, I'd love to be like this person or that person. Why? Because they actually lived a life that was a stretched life. What do I mean? Let's think of David. We wouldn't be talking about David today if David, the youngest in the family, the daydreamer, the, the little shepherd boy who loved to walk the hills with his sheep and sing songs. We wouldn't be talking about him if that's the entirety of his life, if that's all that it was. We wouldn't be a Bible hero. Oh, you know, we wouldn't be talking to each other about, the, oh, don't you just want to be like the guy that roamed the hills with some sheep and sang a few songs? Yeah, he's a good-looking boy. He just went through the hills. I mean, we, we wouldn't be talking about him like that. If he hadn't allowed God to say, David, shepherd boy, yeah, do you want to stay in the hills or do you want to be stretched? Do you want to, to, to become the king of Israel? Do you want to become one of the most majestic army leaders of all time, serving the purpose of God in your generation? I mean, do you want to be the boy that stands in front of Goliath 
and has five little stones and everyone's going to talk about that story for the thousands and thousands of years to come because all you did was move in the name of the Lord. I mean, this guy needed to be willing to be stretched beyond where he could have stayed and refused to move from. We could think of Joseph in the same way. Joseph, the youngest in the family, again, you know, a little bit of a dreamer. But he allowed himself to follow the dream that God gave him. He was rejected by family. I mean, that was undoubtedly did something in him, but there was something pulling him forward, this desire to come into all that God had for him. He went through the time of accusation of against him where they said, you had an affair with this lady. No, I didn't. And then he's in prison. I mean, he was going through some stuff where he could have said at any moment, ah, give up. I just want to go back to normality. Forget this dream. Forget this purpose. I don't want to live for God. I don't want to go forwards on this thing. Man, I just, I just want to go back to the family. But he was willing to be stretched emotionally. He was willing to be stretched relationally. He was willing to be stretched on the inside to find forgiveness and grace towards a family that had rejected him. He was willing to go through the stretching processes of becoming one of the best administrators and managers the world had ever seen. Managing in a home, managing in the prison, on his way to being stretched to reach the ultimate goal that God had for him, which was to administrate in the world's worst famine, in this position just under Pharaoh, in the world's superpower. You see, God doesn't take us from A to Z. The Bible says, if we're faithful with little, we'll be given much. And so God takes us on a stretch and another stretch, and another stretch, and another stretch, because it's all training for the next stage and level of what God has for us. And Joseph is an, is an, is an example of someone who allowed himself to be stretched in each season on the journey to the fulfillment of the promise of God for his life. We could think about Gideon. Gideon, I'm up for doing this with thousands of people, God. You know, give me a full-on army here. And then God says, you're going to do this with 300, sunshine. And Gideon's like, say, what now? <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with this number, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the resourcing here, God. You know, I, I, think, uh, I think I'll just hang back. But he allowed himself to, I'll go with the stretching then. And Gideon and his 300, he discovered with God was enough. But man, he fell out of his comfort zone. We could think about Sarah and Abraham. People who had to leave their family, leave their uh, comfort and familiarity, leave relationship, pay the price of uncomfortableness and I feel I'm out alone. I feel I've stepped away from others. I feel I've moved beyond just hanging around where I've always been and always known. I feel a bit weird and a bit kind of uncomfortable because it would be more comfortable to have stayed where we are. I've said this before on this stream. Many of you are watching are expats. And you know exactly what it, that feels like to have moved from your country. You're out of your comfort zone. It's non-familiar. You can think this is a foreign language at the bank and it's a foreign language at school and it's a foreign language when I just want to go and buy milk and bread. It'd be a lot easier to stay where I was and to speak my own dialect and to speak my own slang language and just kind of, you know. But guess what? The adventure you're having right now, you wouldn't be having had you decided to stay in Familiarville. Now bring that to the spiritual and be like the Sarah and Abraham. They got out and beyond themselves. And it's all of these people and many more that we are actually talking about. Why? Because there's, they were living life on the edge. We were, we're looking at these Bible heroes going, whoa, yeah, whoa, wow, look what God did. And we admire because there's something in us all that wants the thrill of the danger. The, the thrill of the adventure. And that thrill comes when we start praying dangerous prayers. 
courageous prayers, big prayers, because God's a God who answers those prayers as much as he is the God who answers, you ask me for a new apartment prayers. You ask me to be with you at work today prayers. You ask me to open up that school place for your kid prayers. God's the God that says, sunshine, if you're asking me to stretch you and to take you forward and to take you out of your comfort zone and to bring you into, I am going to do just that. Batten down the hatches, strap yourself in because here comes the ride, baby. <laughs> Woo! I'm getting excited. And it's the adventure that these kind of folks went on that opens up when we're saying, I'm willing to be stretched. Coming back to our friend here, Moses, in his life story, he was in Israel got into a fight, messed stuff up, went on the run from Pharaoh who wanted to kill him. And then he is also up in the back of beyond in the fields and the mountains looking after sheep. He, he's like, I am out. I want the easy life. I want a quiet life. Oh, I'm done with the drama. I just want an easy life, man. I've been there. I've done it. I've had drama. I've been falsely accused. The Pharaoh wants to kill me. Man, I just want my peace and quiet. Give me a few sheep. I'll wander the hills. And I will be like Heidi. Now, do you all know Heidi? If you don't know the TV series Heidi, you might want to go on YouTube after this and have a little look. But there was Heidi in the mountains with Peter and goats and a little hut. And I think it was... Uh, her a grandfather as well and they were perfectly happy with their little life in the mountains away from everyone and there was that beautiful tv series uh, theme tune of da 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 oh this is so nice and quiet so moses is in heidi and then there's the burning bush moment and God speaks to him as he's out one day. Oh, the burning bush, I'll go over there and have a look. And God says, right, sunshine, I want you to go back to Pharaoh, the guy that wants to kill you, and I want you now to go and lead my people out of Israel. Are you up for it? <laughs> Moses is like, you kidding me? No. No, no, you got the wrong guy. See, I just want the quiet life. And, you know, this kind of thing you want someone to do and these people someone to speak and I can't speak and no no you're all right and God goes again and says no no I want you to do it and he comes out with all the excuses again look just leave me in my peace man you know I'm perfectly happy just where I am that sounds like way too much drama for me no no I want you to do it you're the man and there's this standoff between God and Moses and eventually God gets a bit mad and says look quit it with the excuses Come on, quit it with the excuses. I'm going to be with you. I'll give you Aaron into the bargain. And off you go back to Pharaoh and do this job. Now, at that moment, Moses has a decision to make. Will I or won't I? Will I allow myself to get out of the meadow and leave my Heidi TV series in order to come into the blockbuster version of life that God has for me? You see, because he allowed himself to be stretched, I can't speak, I don't even know how to do this, I feel inadequate. Man, I'm way out beyond my comfort zone here. I feel, oh. God was able to do amazing things. So we're talking about Moses today. We're talking about the Moses that came out of Israel, he came out of Egypt with all the Israelites. We're talking about the Moses who then went through a wilderness with, mount, with, with smoke and fire and miraculous food every day. We're talking about the Moses that on that journey, when there was no water to drink at Mara, God said, throw that bit of wood into the water and it will become sweet and drinkable. So he did it. I mean, he's the guy that's got these kind of stories in his life now. And this is the guy that where we read about earlier is standing at the, open, at the Red Sea going, what are we going to do now then, God? And God says, Stretch out your staff and the whole waters will, will part and you're going to walk through. I mean, can you imagine sitting down with Moses and saying, Man, 
Tell us about that moment. Tell us about what it was like. And he's got all these miracles and amazing things to, to talk about from his life. Life on the edge. Life out of the comfort zone. See, see, he could have had a moment in his life where he said, no, I, I just want to stay in the fields of comfort. But he wouldn't have had the stories. He wouldn't have had the people sitting around the campfire going, whoa, man. Whoa. You see, he, he allowed God to stretch him and to take him out beyond himself to discover, wow, this is what God can do with someone with a stutter. Wow, this is what God can do with someone who is actually fearful to go back to Pharaoh, but God was with me. This is what God can do with someone who was willing to leave the field of comfort to get into the Hollywood blockbuster movie version of God can do amazing things through very ordinary lives with ordinary people. And boy, this guy was pretty ordinary. He had a temper problem. He had, had, a, he had killed a guy. He, he lost it. He was unwilling. He wasn't the perfect human specimen in any way, shape or form, but he was willing to say, okay, stretch me. And all of us need to be in the place where we're willing to say, stretch me, God, to be the person that you want me to be, not the one I will always default to be. God, stretch me. And when we pray those prayers, God has a million and one ways and more of doing just that. But when he comes with the opportunities, and when he comes with the instructions, we need to keep on saying yes, even when we're feeling like that elastic band. I don't know if I can take more. But you've only got one life. Let's make it a life worth living. The second prayer for today is this one. God, fill me. God, fill me. In Matthew 5 and verse 6, it says this, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. You see, when we pray, God, would you fill me with you? The next question is, how does that happen? To whom does he fill? Well, the Bible says it's those who hunger and thirst for righteousness that will be filled. So when you start saying, God, fill me, he's going to start creating in us a hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now, righteousness is already given to us when we're Christians. We have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, the Bible says. Our status is you are righteous before God. That's why we can pray. That's why we can stand before him. We have already become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and he became sin for us. 2 Corinthians 5, 20, 21. So I'm not talking about that, but we're talking here a thirst and hunger to be like God in our character. God, I just want to be like you. God, I'm asking you to make me more and more like Jesus in my thoughts, in my heart, in my actions, in my values, in my priorities. I'm asking that I would get angry about what gets, you get angry about. I would ask that you give me a holy anger. I would ask you to give me a holy passion. God, I just want to feel like you feel. I want my heart to beat with your heartbeat. And do you know what? When we start praying that prayer, it's dangerous. Why? Because a heck of a lot of stuff's going to start to change in you. You're going to see things differently. It's going to come as a challenge to how you've maybe thought about certain issues of our day. You're going to start seeing things biblically, righteously, and as God sees them, you're going to discover, I'm changing my attitude towards that issue. I'm changing my attitude towards this topic. I'm responding and reacting differently. I discover my my, my heart reaches out differently. I discover I want to use my time differently. You see, it said, Zeal for his father's house consumed Jesus. And when you start praying this prayer, God, fill me. 
God, just give me all that righteous character of you. I am thirsty and hungry to have the same passion running through my veins as you did, Jesus. Now I want it. You're going to discover a passion for God's house, for his people, for his purposes. It's no longer going to be, oh, I've got to go to church because it's Sunday. It's like, I just cannot. I cannot wait to serve. I cannot wait to be involved. I cannot wait to be in worship with my brothers and sisters. I cannot wait to enable the purposes of God. I cannot wait to make happen everything that God wants to make happen. Nothing is too much. Jesus said that his meat was to do the will of his Father. In other words, doing the will of God, ministering, was actually energizing for him. It was exciting. And you and I, as we pray that prayer and allow God to do that work in us and say, come on, bring it on, bring it on. Fill me, God, with everything of your character. We're going to discover the passions of Jesus pumping in our heart, in our veins, in our time usage, in our calendars, in our finances, in our relating together, in our attitudes, in our outlook, in our speech in our priorities and in our values in a way that maybe isn't there just now. We're opening it up and saying, come on, bring it on. I'm signing up for, I'm inviting change. I'm inviting less of me and more of you. And then the final one for today. God, use me. Use me. In Acts chapter 3, 1 to 7, we find this story. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. And Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. This message, this verse, these verses here show us that we can't give what we don't have, but God wants us to give what we do have. God, use me. God, it's easy, guys, to to say, God, use the pastor or use someone else or use that famous preacher or use that famous ministry. God bless you, use you. But somehow on the inside, discount and disqualify ourselves. And so often we disqualify ourselves because we think, I don't even think God could use me, so I won't pray that prayer. Because you and I live in the permanent knowledge of the back, uh, kind of the, the, the scenes, behind the scenes footage of our life. The sins, the stuff that we know we're doing wrong, the stuff where we know we've blown it. And we think, man, there's no way God can use me. And we get inspired by stories and the Bible, and maybe a preach like this, but we internally say, you know, I'm just going to be a spectator. You see, to pray the prayer, God, use me, we have to first of all accept God can use me and wants to use me. Yes, me. Yes, you. And so it's a bit like a football player. You know, you need to get onto the playing field and say, give me the ball. I want to have the ball. God, I'm letting you know I'm here. I'm in the game. I'm not just content to sit and watch and cheer others on, but I'm telling you, God, I'm in the game. Now, I want to have the ball. I want to do something. I played with some football players when I was a kid, and they just wanted to be part of the team but didn't want to carry any responsibility in the team, so they would always kick the ball to someone else. They were like, I'm, in, I'm on the playing field, but I'm not really engaged. And God wants us to be the other kind of player that says, look, God, I just want to be involved here. Give me the ball. I want to play my part. I believe you can use me. In this situation, this beggar expected he was going to get money. And they said, look, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have, I give you. Some people could say it the other way around. I do have silver and gold. 
and that is what I'm going to give you. Some people are called to resource the kingdom. Some people are called to release finance. Some people's role in the kingdom is to be a financier and to bring in to a finance mission and kingdom work. And so it's not the same answer for all of us in these moments, but for them it was what we have we're going to make available. God, would you please use me? And when we pray that and realize God can and will use us, he has many ways of opening up the opportunities to get into the game as well. So those are our three dangerous prayers for today. God, stretch me. God, fill me. And God, use me. Come on, let's pray those prayers and the ones from last week together. Let's open up our lives and open up to that moment and say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm about to pray these prayers. Do your thing. God's a good God. He's a wonderful God. And he wants to do amazing things through very ordinary people like you and me. And whilst he is God, he wants us to invite him in in these ways and more that we fulfill every wonderful thing he has for us. Come on, let's pray together. Father, I thank you for these moments that we've had. I thank you, God, for every person listening. I thank you, God, for the fact you know every precious thing about us and you are so passionately for us. And I pray in Jesus' name that we would all fulfill to the nth degree and more. God, every beautiful, wonderful plan of God you have for us, that we become ever more like you in our thoughts and actions and passions and heart. And Lord, I pray we all have testimony and stories that make us all go, wow, as we just speak of the wondrous acts of God done in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, maybe you're watching today and I'm speaking about a relationship with God that you don't have, but you would love to have it. You can simply say yes to Jesus right now on the screen in church online in the chat box there's a little button just appearing that says, I want to give my life to Jesus. If you're saying, I want in on this, I want in on a relationship with Jesus, I want to know I'm forgiven, I want to be the righteousness of God, this, my heart's pounding, I just know this is right, pray with me and help me, then if that's you, wherever you are in the world right now watching, just click on that button that says, I want to give my life to Jesus. That's going to open up another button that says, I want prayer. Click that button and that brings you into connection with one of the online hosts and we're going to pray with you and help you. Maybe you're watching a little bit later on another social media platform like YouTube, etc. There's other contact details here on this platform for you to connect with us. We would love to hear from you and to help you on your journey. God bless. Join us next time as we continue looking at dangerous prayers. God bless. Hey, Pastor Liam here. Thank you so much for having joined us for that word. I really hope that it blessed you and encouraged you. And you know what? If it did that for you, maybe it's going to do that for someone else as well. So why don't you share the link on social media, give it a like and get the word out. If you would like to sow financially into the ministry here in Europe, you can do so by scanning the QR code or hitting the link in the details below. Thank you so much. We would love to hear from you, so why don't you connect with us and contact us? And the details of how you can do that will be appearing on the screen shortly. We would really love to know who's listening and how it's helping you. Hey, God bless you. Stay in touch, stay healthy, stay well, stay blessed. Praying for you. Bye-bye.